What is going on, y'all? Robert Sykes, KetoSavage.com, coming back at you with another reverse diet vlog update. So this is going to be over week 18. And if you can recall from the last week, week 17, I was traveling quite a bit. I went to White Oak Pastures, and I ate a ton of food and didn't track my sodium intake at all. My electrolytes were out of check. And I told you that that was going to result in some increased weight as a result of fluid retention, and that did indeed. So I started week 18 at a weight of 186.5, uh, which is quite a bit higher. Not quite a bit. It, I, mean, I think I started the prep at 182. So I am now up in weight from what I was at the onset of the prep. But that's not necessarily a bad thing. Uh, so just kind of going through the spreadsheet here, started the week at 186.5. I got back from that trip on Tuesday, so my first weigh-in on Wednesday back at home was 184.8, and then bumped back up to 186.5, 184.8, 184.8, and then ended the week at 184. So pretty much between 184 and 186 here lately as an average. Uh, my average for the entire week was 185.2. Um, my intake, again, last week at White Oak, my average intake was... I actually had miscalculated one of those days. One of those days was 7,106 calories. So my average intake across the course of last week was about 5,500 calories a day. This week, it wound up being a little bit less than that at around 4,700 calories a day. I've had some days that were just over 4,000, like on Monday and Tuesday. And then I had a few days that were north of 5,000, like on Saturday and Sunday, coming in at about 5,200 calories. So my average was around 4,700 calories. Here lately, my goal from an intake standpoint has been to be between about 4,500 and 5,500 calories. You know, 5,500 being on the high end, I don't need that much necessarily. Like I would be able to fuel my workouts just fine on the lower end of that spectrum, but I feel more satiated at, you know, north 5,000. I don't really need to go much beyond 5,000 to feel satiated. If I'm getting a little sloppy, I'll go to 5,500. Um, but I don't really feel full if I'm around 4,000. So my satiety kicks in right around 5,000 calories roughly, uh, which is interesting because, as I mentioned earlier, I am up in weight from what I was at the onset of the prep. Again, I started the prep at 182. I'm averaging around 185 right now. However, my in-body at the start of the prep at 182 was showing me to be at about 16 or 17% body fat, whereas this week, for instance, my in-body had me in at one uh, at 185, I think I did the in-body on the 20th, I was 184.8 on that day, and my body fat percentage via the in-body on that day was 13.5%, so several percentage points lower than what it was at the onset of the prep with more weight on me now. Again, that's going to fluctuate a little bit based off of fluid levels, things of that nature, but for all intents and purposes, I weigh more than I started at the onset of the prep, but I'm carrying a leaner composition. And when I do a final recap of this reverse diet, I'll put some side-by-side -side comparison pictures up there to show what I look like at the onset versus now, and I can still tell that I am leaner now than I was at the onset. I've got more vascularity. I've got more striations, more separation of my muscles still, so I feel good about that. Um, as far as foods went this week, I let's go into my diary here on chronometer. This week started on the 18th, and I was kind of keeping it much more consistent. I was having uh, a keto brick every single day, and then I was doing ground beef and ground lamb most days this week. Um, I did have, let's see here, uh, some carnivore bars throughout the week. I started doing two bricks a day towards the latter half of the week. I just, I don't know, two bricks feel, fills me up, whereas one brick wasn't quite leaving me satiated. Um, and then last night, again, we're recording this on Monday the following week, but last night, the 24th, I had some pulled pork that I had prepped for the crew this coming week, so I had some of that, and then I had also cooked some also buco from the venison that I had killed the year prior. So a little bit of variety with my food, but for the most part, sticking to that ground beef and ground lamb uh, as the base, and then just kind of building out from that. So that's what the foods look like as far as the pictures go. Again, this these pictures were taken the day I got back from that trip, so this has me holding all of that fluid weight from that trip. But even with the fluid retention, you can still see the separation in my legs there, so I feel good about that. Um, 
still some vascularity that I'm holding on to the arms and a little bit of separation, the shoulder caps. So still feel good there. Definitely getting softer on the back. Like I really start to accumulate body fat in the lower back first, the lower back, butt, and uh, lower stomach. That's just where it goes for me. So I've got a little bit more body fat around the midsection here for sure. Um, but I feel like all in all, my fat distribution is pretty consistent throughout the entire body. So I don't have like one trouble area that's just where all the fat goes necessarily. Uh, but definitely still feeling full. Um, my muscles are filled out. It's much of a fuller look. Still holding on to some separation. Just a lot blockier in the midsection. Like that's the main difference for me. I just feel a lot more blocky in the midsection. My seat belt's a little bit tighter. My pants fit a little bit tighter. Um, and that's just one of the things you have to kind of embrace as you go to the latter half of the reverse diet because you are supposed to put on some body fat. Uh, but again, I feel really good about how the composition's holding. I have no complaints there. This is pretty much the composition that I want to hold throughout the entirety of my building phase. So obviously, I want to prioritize building more lean tissue. But I think as long as that end body is showing between 12 and 14, maybe 15% body fat, I can live with that. Um, and I feel pretty good about it. I think anything beyond that is just unnecessary. I'm consuming plenty of calories now to build more lean tissue. Uh, so I don't have to worry about that. Uh, I did put a new CGM in. And my blood sugar has been sta stable at 70 to 90 milligrams per deciliter there. So no issues from a blood sugar regulation standpoint. Um, my protein, I've got this question, so I'm kind of touch on this a little bit. People have asked me how eating so much protein has affected my blood sugar levels, and I am consuming a lot of protein right now. I mean, there's days here where it's north of 350 grams of protein a day, which is a lot. Uh, I'm not advocating that necessarily. But since I'm consuming so much fat relative to that protein, my blood sugar stays stable. Now, if I was consuming 350 grams of fat and only 50 grams of, or 350 grams of protein rather than 50 grams of fat, then yeah, that would elicit much more of a blood sugar response than it is. But since I have a relatively high fat ratio, typically between 70 and 75% of my calories coming from dietary fat right now, my blood sugar has stayed very even keel. So no issues in that regard. Uh, so that is pretty much a wrap here. We got the pictures. Uh, I am going to be getting some updated blood work, and I'm also going to try and schedule a DEXA scan for this coming week. Uh, so hopefully I can get those knocked out, and I'll bring that information to you all next week. Uh, but again, right now, I'm just kind of in a holding pattern. It's trying to stay between 4,500 calories and 5,500 calories, making sure that I'm getting no less than about 350 grams of fat and no less than 200 grams of protein. Again, that has gone as high as 350 grams of protein. But depending if, you know, what that calorie range winds up being, as long as I'm staying between 4,500 and 5,500 calories, uh, I feel pretty good about that from a satiety standpoint, from a performance and energy standpoint. My digestion has been totally fine and I feel satiated, which is also a welcome, uh, a welcome change having been hungry for so long throughout the entirety of the prep. Another interesting fact, I kind of alluded earlier as to how my composition is leaner now than it was at the onset of the prep. I'm also consuming about 1,000 calories more daily than I was at the onset. I think I started the prep at about, you know, prior to going into the prep, I was about 3,500 calories a day, whereas again, now I'm averaging between 4,500 and 5,500 calories a day. So leaner composition, higher caloric intake, all is happy in that regard. So that is a wrap on week 18. Thank you all for tuning in, and we'll talk to you next week, hopefully with some DEXA results to share as well. So thank you all so much. Talk to you next time.